Okay, let's talk about Adam Hadwin. This guy had a very close call last week at the Memorial, and that came just in the nick of time because there's a lot going on, not just the U.S. Open this week, but with the Olympics, the President's Cup, etc. Fill us in on how Hadwin's performance impacted him going forward. Well, I think the way he played so well was he finally sort of managed to get out of his own way. And and after he missed the cut at the RBC Canadian Open, he went out and played just a casual round of golf at Toronto Golf Club, one of the top clubs in the Toronto area. He just wanted to go and get out and play. He actually took a push cart <laughs> and he pushed her, or a pull cart and he pulled his, his bag around and he said, sometimes you have to sort of get back and away from the game and realize that, yeah, it's our job, it's our business, but it's also kind of fun and it should be fun and so I think he's been working on a lot of changes minor things to his swing those are sort of ingrained he's trusting those now and I think you saw that kind of more relaxed attitude out of Adam Hadwin and what a huge performance now uh, by finishing third he he gets a spot in the open championship field which he wasn't in before obviously he moved up to 35th in the world that's his highest world ranking of his career he passed Corey Connors there's this only this is the last week after this US Open they're going to name the two players who will play for Team Canada at the at the Paris Olympics looks like Adam's going to get his spot there unless he does something drastic and, and we don't know what's going to happen with Corey Connors maybe he could uh, put in a great performance and leap up but we'll see what happens and then he's moved up to seventh spot on the President's Cup ranking so one big tournament one of those signature events against a deep field for Adam Hadwin who showed that he can play really helped it but the thing that I liked most about it is what he said at one point he said you know it's been seven years since I've won a tournament that's too long I love that. I love that attitude, too, and I love that he played Toronto Golf Club. We got to experience that with a push guard, too, and what a great experience that would be, too. Now, how about Nick Taylor? This is a guy who won the WM Phoenix Open. Obviously, we know what happened last year at the RBC Canadian Open, but since the victory at the WM Phoenix Open, he, he hasn't played his best. What do you think is going on with Nick Taylor right now? I, I don't really know what to put my finger on. I've talked to him about it. You know, the RBC Canadian Open was kind of a blur for him. I don't think he expected how much he was going to get pulled and pushed in different ways and how how many requests were going to be made he said after his first round he actually was wanted to go over and practice his putting he said but it was going to take him an hour to go over there because there were so many autograph hounds and and people who wanted to have a chat with him friends of his people who said they were friends of his <laughs> and so I think I think when you when you add that week up you can take that one out of the equation but but other than that he really hasn't played all that well and I don't think there's one part of his game that's letting him down Maybe his putting, he could be a little bit sharper. Um, but I think he's a frustrated guy right now. I really do coming into this U.S. Open. Now, seven Canadians in the field this week at Pinehurst. Which Canadian do you think has the best chance to contend? Uh, I think it's got to be it's got to be Adam. I think he's riding a high right now. I think he's trusting his game. But don't you know? I, I would normally say Corey Connors because I think hitting fairways and hitting greens is a key at any U.S. Open. Corey Connors has missed has played five U.S. Opens and missed the cut in all five. I don't understand that, so maybe it's time for for him to break that slump. But I would I would look at Adam Hadwin. And Hadwin is the last Canadian to finish in the top ten at the U.S. Open. That was a T7 back in 2022.